companion program to Rent Help MN launched this week. Home Help MN aims to help homeowners struggling to pay their mortgage as a result of a financial hardship due to the pandemic. The federally funded program includes financial assistance with past due mortgage payments, property taxes, property insurance, association fees, and lot rent. Eligible homeowners could receive up to $35,000 and that funding could go quick. Minnesota Housing is strongly encouraging homeowners to apply as soon as they are able. Don't wait till the deadline, apply now. The website to apply is homehelpmn.org. There you'll find much more on the program, including the required steps and an application. The deadline to apply is Friday, June 17th at 5 p.m. Utility expenses are not eligible under this program, but the website has a link to the state's energy assistance program. Here's a quick recap of the Tuesday, May 17th City Council meeting. The city has settled labor agreements with the police and fire unions for 2022 and 2023. The agreements call for cost of living wage increases of 3% this year and 3% next year. For police officers, it also includes an additional 85 cents per hour each year as a market rate adjustment. Both the city and union reps felt the adjustment was important to remain competitive for recruitment and retention. Both the east and west water treatment plants will be getting new roofs. On Tuesday night, the City Council accepted the plans for the project and authorized the solicitation of bids. The Council is expected to award a contract for the project in June. Construction could start as soon as the middle of July, and the work should be finished by the end of the year. An annual tradition honoring those who've served and died for our country is coming up. Mayor Jerry Cook has proclaimed May 27th as Poppy Day in Coon Rapids. The American Legion and VFW posts have both adopted the poppy as a commemorative symbol to honor those killed in war. Poppies will be available outside several local businesses. All donations are used for programs that support veterans, their families, and the military community. And that's a quick recap of the May 17th City Council meeting. As always, you can find the full meetings on cable or the CTN YouTube channel. We are now less than six months away from the midterm elections. Locally, three seats on the Coon Rapids City Council are up for re-election this fall. The offices that will be on the ballot are Mayor, along with Councilmember Ward 3 and Councilmember Ward 5. Residents interested in serving must file an affidavit of candidacy with the City Clerk and pay a $10 filing fee. The deadline to file is Tuesday, May 31st at 5 p.m. For more information, log on to coonrapidsmn.gov. Grab a lawn chair or blanket and head down to the Coon Rapids Dam this summer for a free concert in the park. A total of nine concerts will be held at the Performance Pavilion. First up on June 9th is the variety sounds of the Castaways. On June 16th, it's Sawyer's Dream, which is 70s Americana. And on June 23rd, country performer Rocky Lynn takes the stage. On July 7th, more country tunes with Raquel and the Wildflowers. July 14th, Eric Christensen and his support group play the blues. On July 21st, it's the New Orleans brass and jazz sounds of the Dirty Shorts Band. And on July 28th, a little polka with the Chimileski Funtime Band. Moving to August, on the 4th, Ecuador Manta plays Latin Fusion, and the concert series concludes August 11th with The Revolution 5, a Beatles tribute band. All concerts start at 7 p.m. and concessions are available for purchase. The series is sponsored by the Coon Rapids Arts Commission. The home remodeling tour is back this year, but with a twist. Instead of walking through remodeled homes, we will take you on a virtual tour of several different properties in Coon Rapids. One of the homes we checked out is located on Crooked Lake. The Wilsons undertook a big project on their 1976 split level home, adding a new lower level bathroom and family room, a deck with a fireplace, and a new master suite and bath. 
They also freshened up the front of the home. And they did it with the help of the city's Home for Generations 2 program, which offers grants, rebates, and low interest loans for big projects. Kristen was super helpful throughout the entire process. Um, the way that the communications are drafted, uh, the criteria for being a part of the program was really straightforward. You can check out the premiere of the virtual home remodeling tour on Sunday, May 22nd at 1 p.m. right here on CTN. It will also be available for playback on YouTube and on our social media channels. The program includes video tours of major home renovation projects throughout the city, interviews with the homeowners, and advice from our housing experts about how your project could be next. The Enochatapan School Board is planning an extensive search for a new superintendent to replace David Law, who is leaving at the end of this school year for the superintendent position with Minnetonka Public Schools. On Monday night, the school board decided against rushing the process to have a new superintendent on board by September. Instead, the board will select an interim superintendent in June for the 2022-2023 school year. Then, from August to November, candidates will be recruited and public input will be gathered through community meetings, focus groups, and surveys. In December, interviews will take place and the list of candidates narrowed to two or three for public interviews, followed by contract negotiations with the top candidate. The new superintendent would start in July of 2023. I, I feel like it is of the utmost important that we let our community know that we are giving them as much time as possible to have input on this. Um, after the last couple of years, the last thing we want is for people in our community, whether we agree with them or not, to feel like they didn't have a say in this. Mm -hmm. And I think <clears throat> option two gives us the most opportunity to hear from every stakeholder in every area of our district. On Friday, members of the Anoka Chamber of Commerce, along with Mayor Jerry Cook, celebrated the grand opening of Advanced Auto Parts in Coon Rapids. The nationwide retail chain sells quality auto parts at competitive prices. And now, they're proud to be located in the Riverdale area. We're excited to be here. I mean, we pride ourselves in giving back and delivering quality parts, giving extreme customer service. Inside the store, the aisles are clearly marked with over 40,000 items to choose from. They offer a number of free services, including free curbside pickup and loaner tools. The store is open for business seven days a week. Here's a quick recap of the Tuesday, May 3rd City Council meeting. The city is seeking funds from the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency for an expansion project at the Coon Rapids Recycling Center. On Tuesday night, the City Council adopted a resolution supporting the grant application for funding. The grant from the MPCA will match local funding up to the original project budget of $633,000. Plans call for a new building for styrofoam recycling, cold storage for mattresses, electronics and appliances, additional parking and traffic lanes, and covered storage to keep collected materials clean and dry. Also this week, the City Council approved a service agreement with the Alexandra House to provide shelter, support services, and advocacy for Coon Rapids residents who need it. The City will pay the Alexander House $12,500 this year. The shelter often works with the Police Department and the City Attorney's Office on domestic violence cases. The reserve program is a big deal to us here in the City of Coon Rapids. These are our citizen volunteers. A new group of police department volunteers is hitting the streets. The seven graduates from the Police Reserves Academy were recognized during Tuesday night's city council meeting. Reserve officers are non-sworn staff that provide vital community services to supplement the work of full-time officers, including traffic control and security details. They will now do field training with other reserve officers. Last year, police reserve officers donated more than 2,500 hours to the city. 
And that's a quick recap of the May 3rd City Council meeting. As always, you can find the full meetings on cable or the CTN YouTube channel. So we're here to honor Chris for doing a wonderful job for the past 26 years. It was a full house at the Coon Rapids Civic Center last Friday for the retirement ceremony of Senior Services Program Specialist Chris Niebler. She was recognized for her years of service by family, co-workers, and the seniors she served. I have loved every minute of this job for 26 years. So who can say that? You know, and it's all about the people. The story of Chris Niebler and the Coon Rapids Senior Center includes hundreds of seniors who have come through the doors. And there were many times when Chris would be that guide who would introduce them to the welcoming group at the center. Soon that person belonged to a new community who met new friends, went on a bus trip, tried a new hobby, became a volunteer, and a life was changed. And we were welcomed by Chris back then when we stopped in to check the place out and, and we've been volunteers all six years. Everything that we did, she was such a good helper. She has helped this senior center and the Coon Rapids Super Senior Club to grow and grow. We got along great with Chris, yeah. We had a lot of good times with her. Each year, Chris and her assistant Cindy Olson would host a senior volunteer appreciation luncheon along with entertainment. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Oh, I said it. She said it. <laughs> what were some of the early forms of Preparation H? We did a lot of volunteer skits is what we would do a lot of, and that took a lot of creativity, and a lot of times it was just last-minute things that we were doing, but it always turned out to be fun. Let's um, give a honk honk to our volunteers today. One great challenge for Chris came during the dark times of the COVID-19 lockdown. I think I'm most proud of getting us through COVID <laughs> with some creative, innovative ideas. B14. Parking lot bingo became a hit for seniors who kept socially distant. How are you? And the drive-by food drive, sponsored by the Senior Center and the Police Department, brought in donations to support the local food shelf. For Niebler, it was more often the little things that made her job so special. Last week we got a letter from a son who said we saved his mother's life. You know, when her husband died, she didn't have anything else to do. Police tape. <laughs> In the next chapter of her life, Niebler plans to do a lot of fishing and spend more time with family, including her two grandchildren. I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate all you co-workers. Um, it's been quite a, quite a chapter, so, um, but thank you very much. And um, I'm just blessed, very blessed. Thank you.